Hi guys, if you watched last week's tutorial on the toe deep divot drill, fantastic. I hope it's helping you, but if you're experiencing issues, I want to just do another tutorial today to help you out with it because we've had some feedback. Often in these sessions, people struggle with it first time. What I want to do is just offer a few little exercises just to explore how you can find these movements by letting yourself just move a little bit more freely and using the body in a, a more effortless way because we're so used to applying tension in the swing and playing with tension we've almost normalized that and we don't really recognize how much tension we're under when we're swinging and what that's doing is it's creating a more blocked movement pattern i.e all the joints are kind of moving together they're all blocked all these segments are blocked that's a lot of inertia it takes a lot of effort to move, but when you break the system up, so when these components move more freely in terms of the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, the torso, all moving independently, yet forming part of a, a functional sequence, the feeling of that is very different. And that's the kind of feeling we want to be applying to these exercises. So if we're feeling like this is hard work and we're having to really work hard to rotate and it's as soon as you speed it up, you start hitting this, then you're operating under too much tension and you're not really letting your body move freely. So what I want you to do, first of all, is take your iron in your lead hand. So left hand for me as a right hander. And I'm going to swing this back and forth, but on the trail side of my body. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to allow the face to close. And notice by closing the face, the swing remains the same. Just try this. Can you close the club face to the ground without compromising the direction the club swings? Is your closing of the face reliant on a deviation of the path? Do you recognize closing the face as this action, which will compromise the direction the club's swinging in? Because the rotation of the shaft is also a contributor to direction. We should be able to swing the club over here, over there, anywhere we want without the path being disrupted. And we should be able to close the face. So the face is pointing to the ground and the club's gone gone out sideways here and it's still not past the wrist. If you find this tricky then your release normally requires the club head to pass the wrist, this hinge here. Think of this as a pivot that this lever is swinging from and your swing normally requires the club head to pass the pivot and that's the early release, that's the adding the loft, moving the low point back, all those issues we get and that will result in struggling to perform this exercise successfully. So we want to get comfortable rotating this club first and foremost, back and forth, with the club remaining on your trail side. It's not crossed over, it's not now in line with my body, it's certainly not passing the hands to the left, it's just traveling back and forth. So it's actually the wrist, the forearm, the elbow, the upper arm and the shoulder that are contributing. This is a supination. Hi guys, I'm really excited to announce that we're gonna be running some two-day GRF golf schools with our GRF Tour Pro experience. And that's with Mark Foster and David Griffiths. We're already running these in Turkey and we've run them in Dubai, but we're bringing it to the UK and it's a condensed two-day version where you get 11 hours of coaching, we cover full swing, in-depth GRF, using the GRF training system, the vector map, everything you see on the videos, plus short game and then we finish it off on the golf course. You'll get to play with both Foz and Griff, them helping you manage your game and transition what we've been learning in our sessions on the golf course. It's two days, it's on the 13th and 14th of May. It's at West Hearts Golf Club. All the details are down in the comments, so check them out, guys. Let us know if you wanna join us. One place has gone already. There's only six places available, so please be quick and join us at West Hearts. So this allows the shaft to rotate freely and the path of the club, the arc, to remain as intended or shift it to the right, further to the right. 
Notice where that is now in relation to my hands. If I rotate my body, it's trailing, but it's squared up. So by closing this in this direction and rotating my body, I can get a sense of where I will truly be in a golf swing. So although this exercise may seem a little bit abstract and difficult to apply or recognize in a golf swing, it's absolutely essential. These are fundamental components to allow us to use our body. This kind of exercise is gonna help contribute to the release of the club to perform this successfully. Letting that club rotate. Let the shaft rotate, the toe points down, handle can continue to travel forward and up, and the club can go now. If we put both hands on the club, we can feel it as a combination. If we're still struggling, take your right hand, okay? And toe deep, just bounce the toe off the ground. And allow the butt end of the golf club to travel forward. Allow the handle to smash through the wall. If we extended the wall up, this would smash through the wall, but the club head just bounces off the ground, travels up, at no point is this necessary. So we can start to feel it with the trail hand. Notice the flexion in the elbow, the softness in the arm. The club's lagging. Now, if you still can't quite feel it, if the club head is still taking over the hands in an effort to square the face, what I'd like you to do is take your grip on the club, hold it out in front, and now flail the club. But we're gonna flail it by using the handle first. The handle is the first part of the club to move. And then the club head follows. So I'm sure you've seen me do this with the boxing pad, where we stand there, I hold the pad there, the pupil puts the club head against the pad, then they move the handle away, whilst keeping the club head in contact with the pad, and then it'll get to a point where the club head will follow, then they'll change direction quickly with the handle, and that's creating that slingshot effect for the power. But notice how it's accelerating whilst de-lofting. So it's a very powerful action. But what we're sensing here is how the handle leads the action. So this is the action, that's the reaction. As opposed to moving the club head first, now we're reacting to the club head. And now to swing the club head, we're throwing it and now we're back to that early release mechanism. So when we start to move the body in terms of a full swing into bigger ranges, bigger movements, this action that we recognize is gonna happen even earlier to speed the club and square it up. So feeling the, the flail to trail exercise, flailing the handle so the club head trails. And then starting to impart that into this feeling with the wall. So the handle can go back first and then it can lead and you can rotate the club into the ground. So we're softening the arms and we're allowing the club to move more freely. When we take this away, bring a ball in and what I suggest you do is play a few shots, moving the handle away first. So here, stood to the ball, initiate with the handle just as an exercise, just half, three quarter swings. <laughs> Trying to play those low shots, but not by holding the angle, but actually using that fluid release with the handle <laughs> leading, which will deal off the golf club naturally as you are ac accelerating the handle. So you're getting a win-win situation here. You're getting the shaft lean as a function of moving the handle forward and accelerating. There we go. And a nice low 50 yard shot. So just starting off with a narrow stance, almost like a, it's like a big chip and run. Handle just flails back first, change direction, hold your finish, and just notice the orientation of the club in, in terms of where the hands are, where you are. This hasn't happened. If you find the club had overtaken, flying, behind you to the left as a right-hander. You've allowed the club to flip past the hands and that's the mechanism that your body's been used to for squaring the face and accelerating it. Whereas here, we're using 
this end, we're using this pivot here. This leads the action. So the pivot is leading the end of the chain. So then we can start to influence what we're doing with the club head. Then we can start to move into those drawers. So what I suggest you do, step back and now feel the toe down divot just behind you. Just be mindful of where the handle is. It's always traveling in front as you strike the ground. And then continue into a finish. And then stand into the golf ball. Of course, we're not gonna be hitting the ground here. As per the tutorial last week with the divot exercise where we shuffled back to feel that action in terms of release in the space where we're gonna be striking the golf ball, that's important here. If you wanna do that, you can just feel that interaction with the ground and then shuffle your feet back to where that kind of ball position would be normally now whilst maintaining that feel of that interaction with the ground and club head and then continuing to a finish and then hold your finish it gives you a sense of where you're going to be as a result of that release so now you can feel the finish that matches that release and then just play a little three-quarter shot and just have a play around you might find it starts drawing quite strong so that's now offering you an opportunity to start to swing more to the right. Explore that space to the right. It's inviting you in now to just adapt in that direction. And then starting to play around with your ball flight. This, where you're gonna start it, where you're gonna see the curvature. Where's it curving from and to? Every few shots, step back, refresh the feeling. Just embed this feeling of where you're going to be. It's a movement map that's starting to become a little bit more recognisable. So it's not just the golf shot that you're intending to play, but there's an intention behind how you're recognising your movement, the finish you're going to be making. Playing around with that feeling. Just easy three-quarter swings. It's a great way to start your practice session. It's a great way to warm up and then build up the bigger movement patterns around the feeling. It's not a case of once I've done it, that's it. It's a case of once I feel this, explore it more, but continually use the exercise just to recalibrate. And that just gives you a confidence to know you're doing what you intend to do and then an opportunity to explore more. So guys, try this out. Let's get that freedom with the arms. Let's get using the swing weight. Let's start developing a sense for this swing weight in space, the orientation of it. No matter where it is around our body, we can sense what's happening and what the intention of that is going to be in terms of a golf shot. So it's not just one release pattern, one swing, trying to think of a number of things to improve the shot when actually it's just how we're sensing the club and what we're doing with it that has the most important effect on our shots, first and foremost. Have some fun, guys, and let us know how you get on.